What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a game that's actually pretty sweet, dude. I've been waiting a long time for like a single player version of RuneScape. A lot of you may not know this, but I played RuneScape back in like 2002. 2001, 2003, in there somewhere when the game first came out and there was pretty much like only Lumbridge and like the starter area and there was like a big iron gate that kept you from getting into all the quests that you had to pay like $5 a month to get past. And so anyways, I've been a long time RuneScape player. I've played off and on here and there every now and again, making new accounts and stuff like that. And I've always wished that there was a single player game that took a lot of guidance from RuneScape. And today we're going to be taking a look at exactly that game. This game is called Black Grimoire Cursebreaker. And we had a chance to take a look at a demo of this game a long time ago. Since then, the developer has been studiously working on the game nonstop. And at this point, it's probably most of the way towards complete considering they've been making announcements about the game moving towards 1.0 on the Steam update. So I figured it was time to refresh that coverage, make sure that it's up to date, make sure that it's something that's going to be useful to somebody and also show it off to a crowd to maybe give the game a little bit of publicity because I've been playing for the last three hours or so and I've been having a really good time with it. My first impressions are very positive. The game does not shy away from what it is. It is single player RuneScape with good graphics a really really nice game world a lot of stuff to do activities all over the place uh, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself I got a link for you down below in the description you can check that out there on top of that you can also take a look around and you can find a link to my discord and my twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out uh, live on any given day of the week but for now let's dive straight on into the game so as I mentioned uh, Black Grimoire Cursebreaker. This game is a single-player spin-off of RuneScape. Pretty much everything that you've come to ex expect from RuneScape is going to be inside this title, up to and including abs like mining absurd amounts of ore in order to get your next armor set. Uh, you've got walks in between towns. There's kind of like economic controls that exist inside your inventory management. All kinds of interesting stuff here to fool around with. But at the moment, my character, there is a storyline and a main narrative to this game. Uh, we are a king that existed hundreds of years ago, and we've been resurrected from um, our tomb by unknown reasons by a necromancer that clearly seems to have beef. And at the moment, I'm helping him gather up things that he needs in order to enact his vengeance, and since there's a compelling spell on me, I have no choice but to go along with it. And so I'm working on doing his quest while at the same time trying to figure out a way to get the curse off of me. And so he wanted a focus crystal, so I'm investigating a guy's house who manufactures focus crystals for all the magi in the realm and it looks like amid the trash a conspicuous note scribbled in poor handwriting catches your eye. You struggle to make sense of the shoddy letters, but it reads, Smart Inventor Man has a lot of valuable things in my shop. Would be a shame if something was to happen to the valuable thing. Because you smart, you understand you need to pay lots of gold to protect them valuable things. Bring gold to me in Tavern this evening, or maybe bad things happen to you and your stuff. The letter is signed Hubert, and by the looks of things, the inventor didn't take the contents of the letter very seriously. I should find someone who passes for law around here and tell them what I've found. All right, so I got to find my way to the Haywind Militia. Aside from that, though, I kind of need to get out here, and I need to get my equipment upgraded. What I'm currently working on is I'm still wearing, like, the starter gear all these hours on into the game. I've got, like, a good weapon, and I've got a good shield, but I haven't been able to get my armor retrofitted for the challenges that are going on ahead. And so I think I need to mine a little bit of copper, and I need to get some ingots cooking, and I need to make myself a new suit of armor. The downside is here, I don't know exactly where copper nodes are going to be at. I found some copper nodes on the other side of the river, but it's kind of far away, and I'm sort of inflicted with a little bit of laziness, so I don't really want to walk that far to go get it. We've got a boat with a raft over here, and it looks like there's a number of guys that are mustering on that side, and it looks like maybe there's like a raft that takes me over to their base. Yeah, it looks like I can quickly just kind of like skiff the river real fast in order to get over there. Maybe we'll investigate these guys. So far, I found the game to be really well designed. Like, if you take a look at the main city that I just got to, Haywind, the place is enormous. Like, it's actually a city. Like, how many times in an RPG have you gone into a city? Did I just get copper armor for free? Oh. Sick, dude. All right. Well, let's just like throw that on right there. 
Absolutely. I definitely want that healing potion, too. Let me get that healing potion, like, right this second. But how many times do you wander into a city in the RPG world, and someone's like, This is the largest and greatest city in all the Imperium! And then it's like 12 houses. It's like Stormwind in World of Warcraft. This is ridiculous. What does this guy have to say? Uh, welcome to our camp. I'd advise you to be wary while journeying outside the protection of the Palisades. Bandit menaces we face are particularly active here in the fields west of Haywind. And what's your role? I've been tasked by Marshal Harrington to target notorious bandit leaders in the area. I've had reports of a foreign mercenary by the name of Nils Yellen causing devastation wielding an exotic kukri blade. His killing spree needs to be brought to an end. All right. Yeah, I'll help you. Why not? So I need to go and talk to the sergeant now? All right, let's go talk to the sergeant. Deputy Reeler asked me to check in with you. Did he now? He reckons he found a potential recruit for his special needs. <laughs> I understand. Well, take measure of you yet. What can you say about your fighting experience so far? Uh, looks like I need level 12 attack in order to get that forward, just like in RuneScape. Sometimes there's going to be like these skill barriers to doing what you want to do, and they're spread around pretty evenly. I've found kind of the same number of quests that require me to be a certain level of alchemy in order to advance. I've found a number of quests that require to be, to be a certain amount of defense to advance, mining to advance. The game tends to spread it around a little bit. Damn, we're getting smoked right now. I might actually have to... Oh, there's three. Run. Okay, never mind. Run for your life. Now is the time to run away. There are three of them, and they are trying to mangle me. There's also a whole bunch of outlaws over here, too. Can I get this one? If I can just peel off... No, don't go back, dude. Don't go back. Don't go back. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Every time you land an attack or every time you land a block, you're going to be getting XP towards the actual attribute that you wanted to work on. If you wanted to see a list of all the crafting and trade skills that are in the game right now, you've got everything from attack to archery to spell crafting, sorcery. You've got lumberjacking, fishing, mining, smithing. You've got tailoring, crafting, alchemy, cooking, all that kind of good stuff. There are many, many things to grind and work on inside of this game. And I've been finding the grind to be really satisfying. Like, what I did is I just put on a playlist and watched a podcast or whatever, and I've just been joyously playing the game pretty much all morning. I do need to pick off these wolves, but unfortunately my, re my regeneration is not exactly what I would like it to be. I guess I could eat some berries to get some regen. Maybe that'll make it go a little bit faster. That one's aggro. That's probably fine. Get that shield up right there. I do have a block ability that I got. Other than that, though, I haven't really gotten that many abilities. They keep telling me that I need to find a defensive trainer and an attack trainer, and then I'll get new abilities. So maybe after we get done with these wolves, I should, like, tool around town a little bit and see if I can find those goodies. But for the moment, I crave blood, slaughter, and war. You've got to time your blocks in this game, by the way. Uh, so your blocks, they hold your character in place and they cancel out your attack animation until something hits you. And so there is skill-based gameplay here where you need to time some of your different abilities in order to not mess up your auto attack and really stack up that damage and get your DPS up to the roof. And I've been enjoying the intricacies of just getting used to kind of like the attack block rotation that exists inside of this title. Haven't got my inventory all nice and managed right now. Let's see what they've got going on as far as trainers go. Because I have gotten a considerable amount of level ups to both my defense and also my offense. So there's got to be somebody around here that can really get me up to speed and get me some new abilities, you know? So over here we've got an attack trainer. Let's see what he's got going on. So as far as our attack training goes, for 300 bucks, we've taken our first steps in mastering weapon techniques. We slightly increase our weapon speed with all weapons. Yeah, I'll take that. We've also got serrated blades over here. Increase your damage with melee weapons slightly. Increase your accuracy slightly. I don't really have any money left, so I'm going to have to make some cash around here. What did the defensive guy have? Are these mostly passives? That'll be a little bit of a bummer if they're mostly passives. It looks like we can get disengage. I can stun an enemy and then leap backwards. That might be nice. Is there anything in the attack trainer further on in? We've got a quick strike. We can do an extra attack with our weapon. Ooh, I can get all the way down in there, but I gotta earn some cash first. Okay, so here's where our principal gold sink is going to start hitting us between the teeth. I haven't really been selling anything. I've been holding on to everything because I'm just a nasty hoarder. It looks like we do have orders from artisans over here, so if I get 10 bear paws, I can get 500 bucks for that. If I get 30 mushrooms, I can get 800 bucks for that. If I get 50 brains, we can get 1500 bucks. I wonder how frequently these cycle right here. That's pretty good cash though, dude, and I know where I can get the brains from. 
like the brains drop off of just about everything. I think I can actually probably double team this because I know where the bear paws drop at too. So let's head on over to that spot and we'll start our little farm session and we'll just kind of like chat about the game for a minute. I found this barley field over here that I can harvest from. I swear to God on that notice board, there's been an edit, all right? It's been a, it's been a minute since the last part of the video. I can't remember. I know somebody's going to be like, dude, you were just over there like eight seconds ago. No, I wasn't. Through the power of editing, sometimes I play like 30 or 40 minutes in between each edit, and I kind of forgot where I was at. But I can get barley out of these fields right here, and I, don't, I think there was a work order that wanted a bunch of barley too, and we could dearly use the cash for some of our skill training I think we're in the hole right now by like 1500 bucks if we want to get ourselves up to speed with all of our abilities and have all the abilities that match up with the actual level that our character is at so we it may be worth the effort here to do it now one of the things you're gonna notice about this game is a lot of the economic controls that exist in runescape do exist in this game as well so for example inventory space is always going to be at a premium in runescape this has a very very important reason why it slows down the rate at which goods arrive at the market because you've got to collect so many different things I can remember many times in runescape I was playing around with certain trade skills or trying to get certain quests done or trying to manufacture certain objects and it would take many many trips like across the map just to bring things around from where I had them stored and where I was farming things to get them put where I want them to go at so that I could finish off the quest and that exists here as well. Your inventory space is almost always going to be at a premium, although occasionally the game does give you things like bags. Uh, bags can be used for the specific object that is denoted on the bag itself in order to store up like five of them for small and as the bag gets bigger you can like condense more and more and more of them inside your inventory. And it seems like a lot of effort has gone into this title to really just kind of isolate that feeling of what made RuneScape so good. Like, RuneScape is not a game that's without its annoyances, for sure. Having played it for the better part of the last 20 years off and on, there are definitely things in RuneScape that feel a little outdated and are a little bit of an annoyance. But those little outdated, annoying things are also an integral part of what makes the game feel the way that it does. And this game goes out of its way to grab those things, which is why I think there's a lot of like Pharmathon RPG type deals out there. But that's part of the reason why this feels so much like the authentic RuneScape experience. While your personal inventory is really, really small in this game, the game does give you a large universal inventory that you can access in every major town. So if I have an item that's way back in another city, it will show up here inside my chest as well, which will make life a lot easier going forwards. Uh, let's throw as much. I missed it by one. Are you serious? I had just enough inventory. Ain't that the way it always goes, though, dude? Ain't that always the way that it goes in life? Always a buck short. There's also a fast travel system in play. I, in general, in most games, do not use fast travel, actually. I'm one of those weird people that walks around everywhere and gets all immersed. But this game does have fast travel. I haven't figured out how to unlock it yet, though. But I've seen a couple of areas around the map where they'll have, like, a specific spot that's, like, fast travel spot. It's usually taverns from what I've seen so far. Well, let's just grab that one barley we need, and I guess we'll head back and get our money. All things said and done, I'm back with my 50 stack of barley, and now we are 900 coins richer. That's going to help out because we've probably got about 2,000, 4,000, 2,000, 3,000 coins worth of purchases to make just for us to get a little bit tougher and a little bit better at combat. And it looks like those things exist for every single trade skill inside of the game. So, for example, for crafting, it looks like the tree's a little bit simpler. But there's definitely things to grind out and mash out here. I'm going to focus on attack first. I'm going to go for higher accuracy on my weapons. And then I'm going to go for quick strike right there too so that I just have it all nice and on my bar. And I can quick strike people in between my auto attacks to get extra damage off. I don't know if this gets any kind of bonus towards like attack accuracy or anything. But hey, I'll take it. Meandering back to where I know the bears are at. Well, there's a bear right there. Let's see if we can get a bear paw off of this guy. Was he like a level 9 bear? All right, let's get in here. I wanted to test out my quick strike anyways. Perfect. Let's see if we can get a block up. Ooh, he tried to faint me out right there. Get him with the quick strike. Let's get him. Perfect, dude. Uh, is there a bear paw in there or is there just meat? We've got bones and we've got meat. Unfortunately, it looks like the bear paw 
is probably like a rare drop off of the bears or they need to be bears at a certain level before we're going to get the paws off of them and so this might actually be a little bit of a task to get done oh yeah dude with that quick strike in there we're dpsing much faster against these dudes than we were before get them right there get a block up perfect all right, he's going to come in for another strike right there. Get him with the... Oh, I missed with the quick strike. All right, well, we got him right there. We got some coins. Take that. Copper round shield, copper bronze sword, copper dagger. I'll take the linen, and I'll take the copper round shield, I guess. Is there anything lootable back here? Sometimes there's little chests or crates or, like, things that you can get more items out of, and that's where I've gotten most of the gear on my character that's actually worth having, like the magical rings and stuff like that. How many coins did they drop? Not the worst. Five or six coins apiece. Just absolutely love the map design in this game. Whatever this developer ends up doing, if gaming doesn't work out for him like it so frequently doesn't work out for any of us, uh, he definitely has a future as a map designer because everything from like the building spacings to like the feeling of the game world feels very much alive. And there's so many RPGs out there that need a nice hefty dollop of that. Like they just need that to feel better. I'm going to throw all that stuff in there. And sooner or later, I'm going to cook up all this stuff to level my cooking. And then I think I'll probably end up selling off all the round shields and everything else. But I'm trying to keep stuff organized inside my inventory right now. Like, I'm trying to maintain, like, a... Oh, there's a general store over here. I can sell it all on this side. Nice. Let's make some money real fast. General stores, I think, are, like, the only stores that actually buy stuff from the player character I've been to a lot of different vendors and a lot of those different vendors seem to have no interest in anything that I'm trying to sell and so I've been worried about my inventory space getting clogged by holding on to sort of ancillary unnecessary items tertiary items I don't know the right word there basically words that we don't really or items that we don't really need in order to make stuff happen 30 bucks for that yeah dude okay that was a nice little increase to our paycheck I don't see any bags or anything for sale here, so I guess I'll just mosey along. I'm sort of in full exploration mode right now. I'm just kind of like cruising around the map, trying to see what I can find. There's bats over here. All right, let's go fight the... Oh, there's a crab. We needed crab shells, right? I think we needed eight crab shells in order to do that other work order to get a little bit more cash in. This guy's trying to... Are they all attacking me right now? Crab's coming out of the woodwork right now, dude. A little crab party happening. Perfect. All right, give me all that stuff. Good stuff. I'll probably sell off the meat a little bit later. Because, oh, there's a cave over here, too. The game world is riddled with these little, like, mini dungeons and things that you should probably take a look around and try to find because inside of them there will be loot and things that you can acquire that are going to make your life a little bit easier. I've found the game to be pretty easy wheeling so far. You kind of just cruise around. You have like a task in mind when you leave town, but after that point, I've just been grazing content. Like I move from thing to thing, I fight what I want to fight, I farm what I want to farm, and I can tell that this is going to be one of those games that I'm going to dump like a crazy amount of hours into. Like I I'm definitely going to throw a lot. I get that same vibe from this game that I got from playing Doors of Trithius, which is another game a lot like this one. Uh, but Doors of Trithius doesn't have the graphical fidelity that this game has. This game is clearly designed from a visual standpoint to look like RuneScape, like later generation RuneScape. But the gameplay mechanics are kind of the same. Like when you play, there we go, throw all that in there. Uh, when you play Doors of Trithius, though, you also go out on sort of like dedicated farming missions to go get alchemy reagents and to do all that stuff out in the game world to prepare yourself for the dungeons and whatnot that you're going on into. I'm going to check out this cave over here. I want to see what's inside of it. Maybe we'll find like a, a sick little loot cask or something that we can get our hands on. Inside the cave, it looks like it's an undead dungeon, and it doesn't look like it's a particularly diff- Oh, there's level 10 bats, though. All right. I can see you. I see you. I'd throw some extra spells in, too, but honestly, I haven't really gotten around to leveling my spellcraft yet. Healing happens very slowly in this game. That is to necessitate the cooking system. Uh, cooking gives you foods that give you, like, buffs and HP regeneration and stuff like that that's going to be different grades of successful, depending on how difficult it is to actually create that item. Uh, I haven't really got... Ow, 12 damage from that hit right there. That was a no-joke hit. Okay, these level bats... These level 10 bats are going to kind of be a problem, dude. They're kind of dodgy. 
My accuracy is not quite where I would like it to be for smacking these dudes out of the sky. I saw the Skeletors over there, and I thought to myself, this will be easy pickings. I was very, very wrong. There we go. We finally got him. Lots of misses taking place at the moment. Are bat fangs worth anything? 22 bucks? Nice, dude. Apparently, I can also use it to craft menacing looking armor. Are these bats actually hostile? I'm going to take a second real fast. You've got an ability that you start out with that lets you R&R &R and get your HP back. It's not very fast, though. Like I said, this is effectively a single-player MMO, although there are online features. Uh, you can connect this game to the internet to see other players running around and whatnot. I'm not really into the multiplayer aspect of any game, so I haven't particularly investigated whether or not I can trade with them or whether or not they can give you stuff or if they're just kind of there as set dressing, uh, running around with their name tag or whatever. It looks like maybe the bats are not hostile. So maybe I can just skip them because everything else in here seems like easier pickings. Uh, we got some copper over there. I might fill up my bag on copper before I leave. Get a big block off right there. 10 damage out. Good stuff. He's down. I just want the coins. I don't really want the bones, but the linen could be helpful for leveling up my tailoring. What's inside the chest over here? Uh, looks like fish. Okay, that's good stuff. Yeah, eat a fish real fast. I could definitely use some health regeneration. And then from there is a dead guy right there, but I can't interact with him. We got some copper ore on this side. I'm just going to fill up my bag real fast with copper ore. I'm not trying to go like too crazy mayhem on the farming in here because we need to have inventory space for other stuff. But there we go. I will top off a little bit and then we'll fill it up a little bit. There we go. So I've got a bag full of copper ore to take back with me. Oh, I don't have a weapon equipped. Luckily, this is not one of those RPGs where you can't change equipment when you're inside of combat. Dude, this rat is putting up a pretty good fight right now. Eat another fish. What's that over there? Copper ore? Well, it's nice to know I've got a copper ore farming location that's, like, easy to access. Oof, okay. Okay. The good news is the nastier the enemies that we're fighting, the faster like our defense and everything else is going to level up. I'm going to hit myself with a healing potion real quick just to get my HP back a little bit faster. I don't see any treasures or anything back there, so I'm going to go this way. I'm just I'm here for the chests, all right? I want the goodies that are inside the chests. And I have found like unique gear thus far, both from quests and also from chests inside of dungeons and whatnot. Oh, nice. I can equip spears and stuff, too. Well, that'll be fun. I was kind of thinking about copper dagger. What does a copper dagger sell for? One thing I would recommend is when you hold down the out key, it does highlight things sort of Diablo style, but the items, they should be inside little boxes that are distinct from one another, like when you're playing Path of Exile, so that you can more accurately pick up items. That's one thing that I've found to be a little unwieldy about the game so far, is sometimes you'll kill off an enemy, and that enemy will drop, like four or five items and when they drop that many items it can be very difficult to like pick the one that you want to pick up out of the stack versus the ones you just kind of want to leave on the ground that have no value and so that's kind of where I'm at with that I think that's actually been one of my only real annoyances with the game so oh we one tapped him all right let's go one tapped him too that's what I'm talking about copper round shield that'll sell for money some coins over here all right, this hasn't been the worst. Oh, there's iron ore back here. There's also an evil sorcerer, though. Oh, I'm getting dunked on, dude. Can I block his magic? Oh, he's regen. Oh, this is not great. Oh! So, there's a balancing mechanism to this game. Um, the balancing mechanism to this game is that do I lose like a little bit of my loot or something when I die? Oh, you do. You lose items out of your bag when you die. Interesting. I wonder if they're still over there and if I can go get... Well, I kind of died in a bad spot, though. Hmm. Uh, so as I was saying, there's a balance mechanism in this game where if you go for heavy armor, you are very much immune to a lot of the attacks that melee enemies are going to throw at you. But if you're rocking out with heavy armor, you're also going to get absolutely smashed. Like, absolutely dented. Did I lose any of the equipment I have equipped? I did not. Okay, that's fine. I can live with that. I didn't lose any bags or anything either. I think I lost a copper dagger. And something else. I don't even know if it's really worth going back down on in there to fetch it. 
Especially since we just need like these crab parts to get like our next big paycheck. But this is fantastic. Like I think Black Grimoire is really, really awesome to finish my last thought because I know some of you are waiting for me to finish it even though I feel like it's fairly obvious where it was going. When you wear heavy armor, the enemy gets multiplicative bonuses to how hard they hit you with magic. And so you may need to have extra sets laying around of, like, mage gear that you can wear even though you're a melee character in order to make sure that you don't get eaten and your lunch doesn't get snatched uh, by that dude down there. You know, that dude reached down in my backpack and yoinked my haritos, and ever since then, I just can't be happy with myself. I got, I got bullied. I got bullied really, really, really hard. Uh, but this is Black Grimoire Cursebreaker. I'm stoked about it. I plan to put a lot of hours into this game because this is exactly what I've been looking for. I like RuneScape, but sometimes I don't feel like doing the haggling and the buying and dealing with other people. Sometimes I just want to play a game all by my lonesome. And this game allows me to get that same RuneScape experience while simultaneously not having to deal with humanity, which can sometimes be a tad overwhelming or otherwise obnoxious. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were messing around with Black Grimoire Cursebreaker, a game that I've put two or three hours into today and have no problem recommending if you're a fan of RuneScape but you want a single-player version of that experience. Uh, this is Uncharted Frontier as far as indie games go. There's games that have aspects of RuneScape in them, that, but there's none that have been trying to create the entire contiguous experience of RuneScape and this one to my eye is the one that gets the closest but if I find anything else I'll let you know and I'll be here I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet but it's time for me to go bye folks